Hello Lizzie here from Lizzie Curtis Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to make JC which is this really cute little bag that's perfect for the spring and summer ahead of us this year and uh, great for weddings, great for parties, that type of thing where you don't need to take a lot of things but you need something that's secure. You've got a zip going over the top for the main compartment and then you've got a zip pocket at the front or you could have it at the back just maybe to hold things that you want to get at quickly. Uh, maybe tickets, uh, maybe your uh, card, a card in there, a bit of cash, that sort of thing. But it's a great little make. It's absolutely perfect for, as I say, the spring and com summer coming up. You can make your own strap, which I'll talk you through as we go through the video, or you can do what I've done and bought a, a commercially made uh, strap just to see what it would look like really. Um, yeah so it works really well and it's a lovely easy little pattern and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I've made this one with um, in our form from Bozal the foam wadding. This time I'm going to use H640 which is a slightly dense uh, wadding which is still got a structure to it but not quite so strong if you like as the inner form so you can choose what wadding you put into here certainly it gives it structure so that's a that's a plus point as far as I'm concerned and it sits very neatly um, as you can see on my desk here um, the pattern when you look at it on the website looks like this the, the picture will be slightly different because I'm going to change the handle and change the picture but that's what it looks like so you can go and search on the website for JC. J A C E Y. Right, so let's pop this little version to one side and let's have a look on the overhead at the uh, pattern in front of us. And what I want to show you really are the two pattern pieces. So you've got an A and a B and you can see how they look. So you need to cut them all out and use this tab here to stick underneath this part and then you've got the full design. So when you've actually cut it out and stick it, stuck it together, let's just get those bits and bobs out of the way. Um, that's what it will look like and it's a very simple design as I said, but it's very effective. I love the curvy bottom here um, and the fact that we do it almost in one piece like with the lining and the outer fabric together you'll see as we go along so I'm just going to pop that out of the way I'm going to open my pattern up just to make sure I try and follow it um, uh, nearly the same as you guys <laughs> Okay, so I've got my bits and pieces here ready. Um, I've got my long zip. Now, um, I tell you what size zip to cut, but in actual fact, I always like to go that bit bigger. You can see it's quite a bit bigger. I do get zips on a roll, which I find very convenient. And all it means is that we can start stitching on this end here, and we can keep that zip slider out of the way. And then there's no worries of having to move your zip slider out of the way when you're machining across or in, uh, indeed it, sometimes it gives people um, a little bit of anxiety when they see the zip slider there they're not sure how to get around it so it's a good idea to cut it long that I'll leave that to you for you to decide got my two lining pieces here and I want to talk to you about those in a second when we come to them because I have cut these slightly differently than the pattern um, and that's deliberate because I want to show you something different um, and then you've got the outer pieces here let me get pop this out of the way. Now I've already put my line, my pocket on here ready. I'll show you that in a sec. But you've got two, isn't this fabric glorious? Uh, two outer pieces that shape as we saw on the pattern. You've got the two gussets there, the lining and the outer. We stitch those together later. And of course you've got the pocket piece which is here. Now we're going to start with the pocket piece straight away and in the pattern you'll see um, the measurements that you need to make to get to this part here where you're putting the, the box shape on there to actually stitch and cut through. So very briefly, as I say, the pattern covers it really well. The pocket is slightly wider than your outer piece and that's deliberate. So if I was to lift that up, you can see it's a bit between an eighth and a quarter inch bigger than your actual uh, piece itself, your outer piece. And uh, that's, as I say, that's deliberate because we can cut it back. When we actually fold it up to meet the raw edge to stitch together when we've turned it through, you'll find that the fold of the pocket should sit along the raw edge of the bottom of your bag. And that is also deliberate. So it keeps everything super duper neat. 
So the first thing we're going to do is to stitch this letterbox effect and as I say in the pattern it's very clearly shown what the measurements are, what you need to do but this is the design you're getting to um, where you've got the, the lines for stitching which is that outside um, box there and the cutting line is the V's either end and then from there to there but if we stitch it um, and then I'll show you the cutting and the turning through. So let's bring in the machine, pop it in, there we go. Now um, I suggest a stitch length of about 2.2 to 2.4, keep it nice and small and you've got your right sides together here, so the right sides of the bag outer and the right side of the lining. So down the sides and then across the bottom there. And please use a walking foot if you find the layers are shifting. And I meant to say that um, I have actually stabilised this already with H640. So I'm just coming back to where I started and I'm just literally going to run a few stitches along so it secures and if I show you on the side view you can see exactly what that looks like and then all we're going to do is to cut into that so I'll do that now I'll switch my iron on ready as well I think you're going to like this little pattern and I think uh, that I might see a few of these made um, and if you do make one, please uh, send me the, the pictures or if you're a, one of my members, post them in the group and we can put them in the album and, uh, and admire them. So we're literally just cutting along that centre line, coming up to where we made that little V. Now there, there's no hard and fast rule about this V. It wants to be about a quarter inch from that straight end there. Um, but but uh, don't to get too worried. If it comes up a bit further, more half inch, then so be it. It's something that's not, uh, there's not a hard and fast rule for it really. It's just a case of, a, it's a means of getting into those corners neatly. So there is the cutting, so let's just have a quick look at that so you can see exactly what that looks like. So you know if you're going right or wrong. Now in the pattern it says to cut back the, the fabric. Now the fabric I'm talking about actually is the uh, foam or this stabiliser here. This is the H640 and I don't suggest you cut the lining. <clears throat> I suggest you only cut the outer fabric and the wadding and it just takes some of that bulk away and leave the lining as is. There we go, we just cut some of this away. Let's see, there we go. So let's just cut this as well. So I'm not cutting through all of the layers, I'm only cutting the outer fabric and the, the wadding. Okay, I'm just that last little end piece there. There we go, lovely. Good. So, so now that's what it looks like. You, you could um, iron those marks away, but it's going to go inside your your bag so you're not, you're not going to see it so um, it'll come off eventually when you put the iron on it anyway so all we're going to do is we're going to post our fabric through the box to the other side and this is where you really want to spend a little bit of time making sure that everything is sitting beautifully that you've got no tucks or puckers anywhere and if you have just snip into those corners just a little bit more as long as you don't cut your stitches you'll be fine and then what I really want you to do is to give this a press with with a steam now I'm restricted on that because I'm sitting at my desk but 
we will put our iron on that and make it look beautiful anyway and then we're going to top stitch all the way around now you don't have to do this bit uh, for me it was, it was more it's more a case of basting it to hold it all in place um, and then to, en to enable us to put the zip in uh, nice and uh, neatly so let's uh, get this pressed just be careful if you're using the H640 because you don't really want to put the iron on it so just be careful and of course once we've done this side we can go to the right side and give it a press there and although I've got a few little puckers I'm going to see what that looks like on the front you see my chalk mark there we'll just get a, a damp cloth to get rid of that and that was my chalk mark for measuring so what we really don't want to see is too much of that lining fabric so just move it just roll that lining fabric back a bit I mean if it's utterly gorgeous and you want to see it <laughs> then so be it so we'll just turn that around so I will top stitch this as I said but that is optional because you're going to top stitch the zip in and again try and get those that lining gosh that's hot <laughs> out of the way there we go I'm fairly happy with that and then of course once we've uh, top stitched that we would put the zip in and then these two pieces come up together and you can see how beautifully the fold of the pocket and the raw edge of the bag sit together which is absolutely perfect okay so I'm going to top stitch my box just so it stays nice and neat and this is optional you don't have to do this if you um, if you're happy with your stitching putting the zip in um, and you're happy with how it's going to top stitch then leave this part out but I do like to give you different ideas of what you could do especially if you're a little bit nervous about putting zips in um, and how they look and how your box looks because your box is going to be on the outside of your bag so you do want it to look pretty so let's just stitch around as I say just tuck that lining in if you don't want to see it I think it's unavoidable in some instances that's why I always choose really pretty lining you know some some think oh just use a piece of calico but hmm you, you are going to see it Now if you're using Bozol, the in our form, then you may well benefit from this step. If you're using a softer wadding, unlike I'm using the H640, I would say it's optional. Okay. So not going, don't go too mad on the um, back stitching and the neatening off of your threads there. Okay, now doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous? So neat and tidy. So now we need to put our quilters tape on. So, and the quilters tape really does help with keeping the zip in place and giving you that security if you're not very confident with zips. I think it's a, it's a great invention. I think we've all benefited at some time with quilter's zip, um, quilter's zip, quilter's tape. Got zips on the brain now. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to push that flat down to make sure the glue adheres to my fabric. And then just scrape the end there to try and remove the, the backing paper. There we go. Just doesn't want to play for me today. I'm going to get my stiletto and push that down. There we go. Same again. Isn't it funny how sometimes it works beautifully and other times it's like, no, I don't want to play today. <laughs> okay, so we get our shorter zip 
the measurements are in the pattern and we're just going to place that right side down over the box. Now you'll probably have to adjust this so just pop it down and then I flip it over so, so we've got some of it stuck down as I say my tape is just not playing with me today it's lifted the whole thing up again so I'm going to position my box over my zip teeth and this is where you can really uh, sort of fiddle with it to make sure that it's sitting and it's not become a banana so just take a little bit of time and obviously you could use pins if you want to to stick that down it's refusing to play nicely so I'm going to get some pins and of course this could easily happen to you so it's no bad thing Not sure that's made any anything better. Okay, that tape has completely come off now. So let's just stick with the old-fashioned way of pins. Just like I say, just make sure that you've got that the zip teeth right in the centre of your box. It would be so easy for it to um, curve, and we want to keep it nice and neat. There we are. I think that's a, a good job done. Turn it around again. And I think a lot of this you can adjust as you're stitching. Oh, we'll do we'll do it this way. Okay, might as well take that big one out now. Just make sure that uh, the ends of your zip are well and truly um, outside of your box. Okay, gosh, that was a long-winded way of putting that in. <laughs> okay, let's pop it under the machine. So if you've done that um, uh, top stitching as you did before then just follow the line that you know and just go over that line if you don't want to do that if you're not confident enough to do that make a second line because actually that could look really attractive so I'm just going to follow that line so this time we need to move the slider let's just pop it under the foot to ensure with uh, this type of uh, zip is just to make sure that your box stays as a rectangle rather than uh, opening up more in the center so that's the only thing you need to keep an eye on so let's uh, just get that straight this side as well Move my slider again. And try to keep the stitching as neat as you can. <coughs> so uh, hardly any back stitching is the key to that. I just like to run over the threads that I've already stitched. You know what? Like the stitching lines I suppose. Right let's have a look and see what that looks like now. So after all of that business with the tape I think it's looking great. So let's just give it an iron and ironing is definitely your friend in all things that you do. 
just always make sure that your iron is beside you if you if you can um, to have it switched on and ready to um, to go so there we are that's our lovely lovely zip installed and it looks amazing okay very happy with that you could also consider which side of the pocket that you want your slider to be as well so for instance this will be on the outside for me that's perfect as a right-handed person that's perfectly positioned there on the right okay so now what we need to do is to stitch these two top edges together all I want you to do is to make sure that that bottom edge is um, on top of the raw edge of your outer piece so give it a nice um, press I would put a couple of pins in just to hold it so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch along this top edge there just on the lining fabric and joining those pieces together So about a quarter inch seam allowance to be honest you're not going to see it it's not going to make any difference so I would uh, just uh, make sure that the two ends are stitched together okay so that's our pocket installed looks amazing looks really lovely so you can see that the pocket just um, is just slightly wider, just by an eighth of an inch this side, maybe just more than an eighth of an inch that side. But what we're going to do is that we're going to base this together, just to hold it together. So I'm going to base this with a large stitch and I'm going to base it on the right side of my fabric. So an eighth of an inch and I'm going to go all the way around so my the fold of my pocket is caught as well so around those corners to get that pin out of the way and then up to the top Okay, that's lovely. So, with our scissors now we can just trim that away. Get my big scissors for that. Just so we're keeping nice and neat. You shouldn't need to trim the bottom around that pocket. Let's just take that pin away. Fabulous okay so that's all we need to do with that okay right so the next stage is to put the uh, the zip into the top pocket here the sorry the top of the bag here so the zip's going to go along here we're going to make a zip sandwich so we're going to put our right side uh, facing us we're going to put the right side facing down of the zip down onto our bag and then we're going to take our lining piece now this is where I need to talk to you about the lining piece because I have cut it excuse that little corner cut off there but I have cut it um, a bigger all the way around so the top um, the top edges meet the top edges are absolutely dead straight but you can see that I've cut it at least a quarter inch bigger all the way around because after we stitch the zip in we're going to stitch our lining to our bag and I've found that unless you're incredibly accurate your um, bag lining could uh, be slightly out even if it's just an eighth of an inch it's worth getting it um, perfect so I've cut mine just a quarter inch bigger all the way around I can add that into the pattern so it, as a sort of a top tip um, but basically all we need to know is that that top edge there those raw edges uh, absolutely stay together but you'll see that my lining is that bit bigger and you'll see the benefits of that um, in just a little while okay so we'll put our zip down 
face down onto this and then our lining and our outer is actually right sides together and then we're just going to stitch our zip in place I like to stitch from the teeth side all the way along obviously you can uh, pin or use your quilting clips to hold all these layers together okay let's go get them lined up beautifully so by pinning and and you want a quarter inch seam allowance on this by pinning and clipping um, really holds these layers together so let's make sure that those raw edges are together So there's our first bit done. So if we open that up, you can see what it looks like. So there's our lining attached. There's our zip installed. So we're going to top stitch this. So you need to push your lining under and make sure that it's lying flat and then give it a really nice press so it's out of the way and it's neat. Again, you might want to trim the foam back or you know where your wadding is you might want to thin those layers out these things do make a difference and then make sure that your top edge is sitting beautifully give it a press make sure that it's uh, all equal distance all the way along and then we're going to top stitch stitch length on 2.5 now if you stitch your uh, zip and your fabric too close together you might find you'll need to adjust your gusset because that will alter the dimensions of the, the width and you'll see that shortly of where the gusset joins so I want you just to bear that in mind so let's uh, push that out of the way so there's our one side done all completed so now we just need to do the other side so again it's right sides together with the zip and the outer and then right sides together with our outer and our lining so if we open that up like that there's our right side and that literally sits over the top so if you were to have a look at it there's the right side of our outer right side of our lining and we're going to stitch those in place now so let's get them nicely lined up try to get them the same as the previous one you've just stitched quarter inch seam allowance again And get all those layers sitting beautifully just make the raw make sure the raw edge and the tape binding the sorry the zipper tape is sitting together and if you keep to the same seam allowance then both sides of your zip will be the same So again, just come to the end. Okay, so once again, we just need to give that a press. Make sure our lining is out of the way. I always press that first. You might want to trim the ends now to make sure they're the same and that's why I've done my lining just slightly bigger just to give me a little bit of wriggle room this 
fabric is just adorable, isn't it? I can't remember what the name is. I'll have to look it up. Okay, so let's just top stitch again. So we can trim all this now. So I'm getting my big scissors. I'm going straight across the end of my zip. Just make sure when you do the other side that you've moved the zip slider. And trim that. Great, that looks lovely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch all the way around these pieces so they're all joined together. So this is why I had my lining um, bigger than my bag, so it gives me a little bit of wriggle room as I say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, well maybe on the side here, and I'm just going to go all the way around to join all of these fabrics together. And that way we're dealing with just one piece of fabric. Just mind here when you come into the end of the zip, you want to make sure that those are together. And then I'll trim that lining away. So I'm increasing my stitch length to 3.5. And of course you could pin all of these layers together. we're going around that pocket again. Well there's a lot of repeat stitching here. It kind of it really is worth it. Try and keep within that quarter inch seam allowance. At the end of the day, when you put the gusset in and if you see any of those stitches, you can just pop your quick unpick in there and uh, remove them. It's, it's quite easy to do, isn't it? So, Okay, so we're coming to the end of where the open zip is. So I just want to make sure that that's closed. I'm going to use my stiletto to hold them together. Make sure the zip is lined up. I'm actually going to do a couple of stitches just to secure them. So there we are. Didn't take long, did it? It's worth doing as well. So I'm just going to trim the lining away. I love using my big scissors for things like this. Do you love the feel of a, of a big pair of scissors that's crunching through all your layers? I love it. It's not very often we use our big scissors these days, unless you're dressmaking, of course. But even, actually, even so, people will use um, rotary cutters for dressmaking. <gasps> I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm old school. Although I haven't done any dressmaking for ever such a long time, I think I would still be wanting to use my big scissors. You know, your big dressmaking shears. Nothing quite like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm nearly done. So 
So a big tip about making your lining bigger, I think that's really worth doing. It's hardly any wasted fabric, but it saves a lot of tugging of the lining to make it fit to your outer bag. Um, it just makes the process um, less stressful perhaps. Okay, so that's all cut away now. So the next stage is actually to put our tabs on. So you should have the information in the pattern about the tabs. Um, and you're folding the long edges, I'll show you the front. You're folding the long edges to the middle and then you're folding again to get a one inch piece. Um, and then all we're going to do is top stitch and then you put your D-ring through and then you just join the ends together. Okay, so I'll do that at the machine now. Now the strap is made in exactly the same way. If you want to make a strap that matches the fabric, um, and uh, you'll need, I haven't put in the pattern because I, I thought I'd give you the option of buying a, a commercially made one, or one that you can make yourself, but you will need about about 48 inches of fabric. You could probably get away with less, maybe just the width of fabric. You could, could certainly uh, try that. Um, and I've got my strap here to do, so we'll see what that looks like. Um, um, or you can easily get from Amazon straps pre-made, uh, which you might prefer. And they're about um, seven or eight pounds, so it's probably about $9. Okay, so if we look at the side camera, you can see that I've stitched my little tab there. So all we're going to do is thread our D-ring on, and then we're going to stitch across the ends just to hold that together. Now I always start from the middle and go back and then come forward. That does stop uh, the, the actual tabs twisting so they're, they're sitting very nicely on top of each other there so we'll do the same with this one so start in the middle go back come forward and that should be perfect and of course you can always pop a pin in get some quilters tape as long as it's nice and sticky and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop that on the ends of our bag there. So that's just going to go across there and we're going to stitch that down. If you've got a, a table for your machine, which I have and I very rarely use, well, you can probably count on one hand every time I've used it, use it because it, it holds your piece of work up nicely um, and stops anything moving. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's fine. Look, get that right in the centre. Okay, let's do the other end. And again, just line it up. Put a clip in if you need to. Start in the centre. Go back. Come forward. And there was our second one done. Looks lovely. Love the fabric. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at our gusset. And as I say, we've got a, an outer piece that is um, stabilised with the H640. As I say, use, you can use foam as well. I did with this one. It's perfectly fine. And we've got the lining piece as well. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put our... Uh, our outer pieces right sides together so let me get a couple of clips now for this so they literally just line up perfectly like this and then you're just going to swing that one over and that's going to clip on there okay now you can stitch that like it is now or you can add the lining we might as well add the lining so pop it under or flip it over might be easier so again right sides together now um, I just want to talk to you about your zip if you did go further into your teeth with your zip 
you might find this is a little bit narrower than your, your uh, gusset. So I would want you to make adjustments to that yourself. So you would need to probably trim your gusset down. Um, so if you stick to the quarter inch, as I suggest, then your gusset and your outer bag should fit, I mean, absolutely perfectly, which is that, that has done. So now what we're going to do is stitch these on right sides together and quarter inch seam allowance. So let's just do that. Stitch length is 2.5. Don't forget you're going through lots of layers now with the zip zipper teeth, the, the um, zipper tape and your tab as well. So take it easy. You might want to increase your stitch length to a three because you're going through lots of layers and it's always recommended you do increase your stitch length with lots of layers. Okay. And just make sure that tab is sitting straight. And because we've basted it, you shouldn't have any trouble with it. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've got our gusset outer looking like that. We've got our gusset lining looking like that. So all I want you to do is to bring the two together. So they're sitting wrong sides together like that. Okay doesn't matter which way you have it, you can have it like that. As long as they're sitting wrong, si wrong sides together, you're fine. So you can see we've got the outer fabric there, the lining fabric there. Now what I want you to do is to base these two uh, long raw edges together. You don't have to do, you don't have to go into the bag because we've already basted that. So I just want you to start from here and baste all the way down to this other end. Um, if you want to top stitch across here, then please do so. Um, it will look really nice, so you could easily. Um, I'm not going to, because I didn't with the original, but I, mean, I am going to base these two long gusset seams together. So let's pop it under the machine. Again, I'm just increasing my stitch length. And this is where a free arm machine really comes into its own. So just make sure your layers are perfectly aligned. A walking foot is good. I know I'm not using one, but um, I will change that for when I put the gusset in. So that's one side done. Let's just trim that little bit of wadding. There we go. doesn't matter which side, I just have to pick the lining side. Okay, good one. So there we are, so there is our pieces of gusset stitched together beautifully. So now all we need to do is to attach our gusset to our bag. Now what I'd like you to do is to find the center of your gusset um, sorry, lots of bits and pieces uh, of your gusset and your bag. So just bring these together so your corners are absolutely perfectly sitting on top of each other. Just make a little snip. You don't need a massive one. And then the same on the other side. A little snip in the centre there. And then the same with your gusset. And obviously you can do this before you stitch it together. So let's just trim these threads while I've got them in eye line. So again, just snip. Bring the other side together and snip. Okay, so now this is the moment of putting the gusset to the bag. And we're going to bind these edges so they look absolutely gorgeous inside the bag. So just get these lined up. You can do one at a time or both, matters not. And then you're just going to fit your gusset to your bag. Now, when you come to stitch, and this is really important, let me open that one up so we can perhaps see better, that on 
you're going to line up your corner here and this is, has been designed so you've actually made a dart in that corner um, if I show it on the side camera it might be easier to see so where that you've got that 90 degree angle at the top there that actually folds now together and that becomes you it's almost like a dart um, and that's where you start stitching from and your gusset comes further down the side of your bag so it's quite a sweet sweet little design really so although I'm clipping I know full well I'm going to undo this as long as I keep that centre one absolutely 100% perfect this I can manipulate but you can obviously take your pins take your clips clip all these edges together just to make sure that you are 100% happy with everything that you've put together so don't forget that 90 degree angle there that comes together as a dart and you'll find that your zip comes further down your bag. If we look at the one that I've previously made, you can see how that works. So this is the dart I'm talking about, and then your zip comes right down here. It's a couple of inches, I suppose. Um, so then we are just going to, as I say, clip these together. Now I'm going to get my walking foot on this to make sure my layers don't shift because they, they may well shift. <laughs> and then so we'll do this side and then I'll do the other side. So I'll just change my foot and I'll come back to you. OK, so now I'm ready to go. I've got my walking foot on. I've got that one side um, pegged clipped and or you can pin as well but I prefer when I'm using lots of layers I do prefer to use clips um, and we literally start at the point of the dart we're doing a quarter inch seam allowance take your stitch length down to 2.2 and then wait make your way along the bag now you might want to snip into the gusset to make sure it fits so when you come to the corner you can snip into your gusset um, and I do although I've got this the wrong way around for me I do actually like to stitch the, the straight side onto the curved side I just happen to have the other way around this time so let me take my clips out I want to keep that center one in because I definitely want that to stay where it is now the key to getting a gusset to sit nicely and to fit particularly is to make sure that your raw edges are sitting together so um, just keep adjusting your pieces to make sure that your raw edges are sitting absolutely together that way because I've done all the measurements for you it'll all fit so that's looking gorgeous so I'm going to take that off now and continue I'll take these out as well and as I say um, do stitch from the straight side rather than the curved side so I'm just snipping my straight edge my gusset you don't need to snip the the curved part of your bag try and stick to a quarter inch I know that's not always easy but try pivot around that corner and then look to your dart at the top pinch those that 90 degree corner together keep an eye on your zip slider and your d-ring you don't want that anywhere near the needle of your machine okay so that's one side complete looks great doesn't it I love it that the lining is in place uh, as it is because then it stops it um, ruckling up inside your bag so now we just need to do the other side so I'm, go I'm going to open my zip even more now so I'm just going to get my center marks lined up I'm happy with that and this time I'm going to stitch from the straight side I'm going to start from the dart no matter what happens you want a really lovely crisp dart at the top there 
And then I'm going to snip into my gusset and just work, work my way around the curves of the bag. I'm going to use my stiletto to hold my raw edges in place. Swing it round. Make sure it's all lying nicely. Take my centre clip out now. Again, I'm just going to snip into this corner. Not much, maybe five little snips at quarter inch apart. I'm going to check my seams when I've done, just to make sure I've caught all the edges. These things always have a habit of moving. Just work your way around. And then once you're past that corner, you can get hold of your um, dart at the top here, pinch that point together. Let's get my stiletto in there. And then make your way up the side of your bag. Just keep an eye on D-rings and zip sliders. so let's just check make sure that's oh I've got a little pucker there let's get rid of that so just snip into that Just redo that little bit there. Okay, that's great. Right, so let's turn it through, make sure I'm happy with what I've done. You can see this is a softer look than that, but that's up to you, isn't it, how you want it to be. I've given you the options. You could use the NR foam from Bosel, or you can use the soft wadding, like I've used the H640. It doesn't give you quite as much structure, but it's still a very sweet little make. So there is our, in essence, our bag made. There we go. So, oh, I need to pull out, push that corner out. Let's do that. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. Lovely, isn't it? So now all we've got to do is put the binding on. Now you can be brave and stitch the binding on um, both sides at, at the same time, or you can do what I'm going to do is at one side and then flip it over and you can hand stitch it. Okay. So I've got my binding here and we're going to start where the dart is up that top there. So you're just going to fold your binding in a quarter inch or so and give it a little press. Now I've done bias binding because we're going round curves and I'm just going to top stitch that folded edge. So if we look at the side camera here, I'm just literally, it's going to be the other side, but I'm going to top stitch that on directly onto my bag down there. And then I'll flip it over and I'll hand stitch uh, when I've uh, completed the video. So let's pop it, pop it under. So this is where you could use a really gorgeous um, contrasting binding. So when you look inside your bag, you'll see maybe, I don't know, bright red or something like that. That would look amazing. So nice little neat start. And then I'm just literally going to go around the bag, just as I've just done with the, uh, the seam. And we 
because we've used bias it'll go nicely around the corners just need to manipulate it a little bit as you would just bring it around use your pokey tool time just making sure I don't pleat that okay Keep your layers out of the way. So when you come up to the top dart, or top of the dart on the other side, again you want to cut it by back by about a, a quarter inch and then fold that under. We haven't got the benefit of pressing this. I really wouldn't try to do it exactly uh, prior to your stitching. I would do what I'm doing because because it's biased, it's going to stretch. You might be way out, but you could give yourself a little bit of leeway here. Fold it over and then if you've got a little baby pressing mat like mine, you can bring it up and give it a press anyway. So let me just get those edges straight. Great. Very useful. <laughs> so just watch out for those D rings again. So it's the D-ring and the zip slider, just keep an eye on that. Nice little back stitch to secure. And there is our first half done. If we look on the overhead, we can see a little better. So just then flip it over and then you can hand stitch the other side so flip it over like you would a quilt and then just hand stitch that and you'll get a, a beautiful finish really lovely so it's just a case of doing the other side so okay let's do that so there's my other side done beautiful and then I'll go away and hand stitch all of that so it's lovely and neat we'll just turn it through and see what it looks like and now in essence that is our bag complete it obviously needs a lovely press and this is where you can decide whether you're going to put your own self-made strap on or whether you're going to buy a commercially made one like me with the, the first one that I made that's up to you really but you've got the hardware on there ready looks really lovely now the strap is literally now I've just done width of fabric with this um, and I've given you the measurements um, well, I haven't given you the measurements it's width of fabric but it's the same measurements as your tabs so if you look at the measurements for that it's the same and then all you would need to do is make, make sure you've got a couple of swivel clips um, you could also put an adjustment adjuster on here as well but let's just machine this first I'll keep my uh, walking foot on so this is where I'm going to go up to size uh, three in length 
and I have stabilized this with a very soft interfacing. bottom. Try and make sure that any little raw edges that you might have there where you've folded the fabric to make it neat. So I folded it in a quarter inch just as I did with the binding really. So if you, um, if you do make the strap, you'll need to buy a half a metre of fabric. I'll put that in the pattern so you know. Okay, so that's the strap made. Let's look at the side camera for that. Um, so I will have um, turned in a quarter inch and then folded my long ends to the centre and then folded again. And that's given me the, the one inch um, width for the strap. Now if you want to do a uh, if you want to do a, a bit of hardware here you can have the you can just put the um, swivel clip on the bottom just like this and you could put a swivel clip either end and just leave it as a long strap. It's actually quite a good length for a over the shoulder not, not uh, a crossbody but just an over the shoulder bag. You just bring in the adjuster slider down to the end and then you want to just attach and stitch across here. So let me just do that while you're here. I could have done without my walking foot on but let's just keep it on for the moment. So you're attaching your slider your adjusting slider like this. Once you've put your your adjuster slider on like that you're going to stitch across the end there so it looks like this. Let's just show you on the front camera, the side camera there. And then all you're going to do is make sure you put your swivel clip on. So there's your swivel clip and you're just going to bring the other end up and through over over and under or under and over <laughs> your adjustable slider and then you've got one end attached like that and then all you're going to do on this end is attach your other swivel clip so just make sure it's uh, on the correct side so there's your adjust a slider, there's your swivel clip at the end there and all you want to do is make sure that that's going the right way so just fold that under, again I've got my walking foot on so I'll make it a wee bit bigger than I normally would like that, make sure it's all sitting beautifully straight your other one is on the bottom there and then we just stitch that end in place. Again, start in the middle, go back, come forward. There we go. Just trim all those threads away, just keep trimming. I've had a lot of threads today. <laughs> So there is our self-made strap, which is lovely. And then all we're going to do is attach it to our bag. There we go, one. Two. Beautiful. And then we've got that adjustment there if we need it. 
I think that's a really lovely make. I can't decide which one I like the most. I like this one because it's quite structural. I like this one because it's a little softer. And of course, you've got your binding inside, which makes it absolutely beautiful. Really tidy. I've got to hand stitch it now. And uh, I think that'll be perfect for a wedding. So these little beauties are JC. I hope you love making her.